Ho, ho, ha, 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 ho, It ha, made me ho, think I ha, was not ho, me. Ha, ho, ha, ho. Behold, ha, review ho, shall ha, come to ha, thee. Ha, ho. And that's just on a loop. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction against the Corbin. I'm Rick. <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks for the Patreon follows. Hey, Patreon. Hi, Patreon. That's actually a fitting opening for this film <laughs> review. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no spoilers right now. Uh, but yeah, the um, today we're doing a movie review. Little, little, little shit. I'm surprised it took us this long to get to this, actually. I know. I'm so, it, we should have gotten to it right when it came out. Exactly. That's, very, very sorry. Actually, the reason I think, one, it didn't come here. So that that was that the, was that, the main that thing. Was the main thing exactly. And then it was on Sony, which until recently I didn't have access to because I have to get. Sony is not available here unless you do it like through the Sling app. Uh, so it's a, it's two subscriptions you have to get, and so that's that's the yeah, that's boring. That's but what that's, why, that's why. Yep. Anyways, but obviously our dosti or however you say dost in uh, yeah. How, Ma- what is the word in Malayalam? In Malayalam, I think they've told us before, but I've I forgotten. Know, I forgot. apologize. Our dosti dosti dost. Uh, LJP, his most recent film before his more upcoming one. Right, the one we've seen trailers and teasers to. Um, and it's also I think he did. Did he write it? He no, was, no, he produced it. Yeah, um, uh, written by. Yeah, written by Haresh S. And uh, Vinny, Vinoy Thomas. Uh, and composed by Sir... Uh, Sviraj Saji. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then starring... Uh, pr- well, primarily, uh, these, 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 uh, uh, Vinay these, Fort yeah. as Sajivan, and then his partner, uh, Chembyan Vinod And there's Jos. some other cameos, but I don't know if that's spoilers, so I'm not going right. to say it. Yeah, we I, don't want to let you... Just, there are some cameos. This will be a spoiler review, but I just don't want to say it yet. Yeah. Um, so, but that, what, I'll just go ahead and say it. There's a 100% spoiler review since it came out almost a year ago now. Um, so if you haven't watched it, it's on Sony. You can go watch it there. It's only, I think, 154 minutes. It's actually quite short uh, for an Indian. <laughs> it's actually yeah. funny. They, on Twitter, um, Ant-Man, there's a report that Ant-Man, the next one's going to be like 2 hours 45. Okay. Right? And I was like, there was a time when I used to think that was a long film. <laughs> yeah. You got schmutz on your mustache. Your mom was over right there. Under your, right under your nose. Is that what that is? Yeah. Re- leftover Remnant of Mom. It's a great song. Leftover Remnant of Mom. Anyway, so yeah, if you haven't watched it, this is going to be a spoiler review, and this is one that you kind of have to talk about. Spoilers. This is, this is a lot. I don't know how you could talk about there's, this film without the spoilers. There, there's a lot going on in this film. It's a sci-fi fantasy. Uh, film, so uh, I just keep that in mind. But Rick, your initial thoughts, please. Um, been a while since I wrote a paragraph. Oh, nice. But oh, that's it. Uh, yep. But, but. <laughs> I had a lot of notes. So leading up to the paragraph, uh, and this is one of those films where I could very much. I'm 99 certain I got what he was saying. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. <laughs> um, because well, let me just say before the paragraph. There isn't anybody in cinema globally more intelligent than this man. <laughs> what he can do. What yeah. he can say without saying. What he can saying, say without you know. saying. His, yeah. his cinematic IQ is, is something that uh, the world needs to be made aware of because he is one of the great filmmakers of our time. Mm-hmm. I, I, as just He's proven it now to multiple, me with all of those out. films just what he's done thus far yeah so i i wrote things down like the obvious of the the symbolisms of searching for joy being stamped to death by an elephant uh digging pits as they're constantly searching for the joy um a portal into the machinations of time the church also being a toddy shop so what ultimately all of my notes led to at the very very end which i loved was this paragraph we've been conditioned to believe that the journey to finding joy 
can only be found on the isolated trails of pursuing our temporal purposes, obediently observing our religious dogmas and laws, or relishing in selfish fleshly indulgences. But the journey to finding true joy comes when we cross the bridge away from those things and into the liberating freedom beyond the machinized limits of space and time, carnality and individualism, into the miracle of life we get to share together in the limitless, limitless expanse of God's creative genius. That, to me, is the film. Mm encapsulated yeah yeah um so you didn't like it freaking how do you not how do you not if you love film yeah i don't know how you not well, the, love this i this film. is actually my favorite lgp film I'm, i agree with you and jolly taku probably visually is definitely but and they're our, our, very similar yeah but very similar issues with jolly taku and it was on purpose it was that you couldn't connect with anybody right because that's not that wasn't the point of that film not at all there, there was, a, there was a completely to. different point of that Correct. film right um and visually that one was even though this one was stunning as well that one is even more stunning that one was just agreed just, that just one has something in, creme de la creme agreed. in terms of visuals agreed um, but in terms of just overall, I think everything all put together, this is my favorite. But I can see why somebody who they because this is film that you kind of have to pick apart because he does not give you the answers. No, not at all. And I don't think he, he might not even have all the answers for you, actually. No, in a weird way, though, this is it has nothing to do with each other with storyline or aesthetic. Nothing. But in the same way that somebody could walk away from the lighthouse and not get it. Mm. There's a lot of folks who could see this and not get it. And, yeah. and part of that is because it's just... When it comes to the what we love in film and the higher level expression of the art form for us, it doesn't get any better than this movie. Mm. Uh, it, it's... talk. You don't even have to worry about like the baseline grade school level, I would say, Please don't give me exposition in your dialogue. You know what I mean? Well, you definitely you don't do that. ever have to go there because he's doctoral level cinematic comprehension. Yeah. And does things with his visuals, does things, makes sure that even though he didn't write the script, uh, this script is unbelievable. Yeah. And there's a, there's a lot to dig into <sighs> in terms of the, the sci fi of it, what like the whole thing in terms of like the loop. Of like what and like I said, I think the people that don't don't want to continue like this is a film that you could think on for weeks, honestly, probably and talk about yeah because of what what's your theory? Yeah. What's your theory on on what the whole thing? Because there's a lot in this. Like I said, I don't even know if LGP knows all the answers, well, and he's not going to tell you if he does know all the answers. Right. He's going to be like, "What do you think?" Happened? He's going to let it go. Right. And Absolutely. I love films that literally. This is a quintessential film of. What do you think happened? He's like, the film's not going to tell you what happened. Right. Oh, it does, obviously, but it's not going to blatantly tell right. you. It's like at the end, nothing gets wrapped up in a boat. It actually probably leaves certain people with more questions. It does. <laughs> Especially with the, the grease moment there at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's grease meets E.T. <laughs> and I freaking loved it. Oh, yeah. I, I love the it. I love the uh, end there. But, yeah, let's um, before we get into all of our theories and everything, let's just talk about all the technical stuff yeah. and, and stuff like that. And I thought all the acting was obviously just, it, it's a Malayalam film, so I've just grown accustomed to being like, yeah. everybody's going to be really Everyone's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, and there was certain, once again, spoilers, certain cameos that sh sh showed up that I just either forgot or just did not know. And I was Me so too. happy when Me it too. happened. And I can recognize him on a silhouette now. Especially Subin, man. Yeah. That, that one for me was like, hey! Hey, Subin's here! <laughs> Woo! Oh, and he's weird! Yeah. Sweet! <laughs> oh, yeah, so you, you kind of have to figure all that. But yeah, every, all the acting was... Um, uh, top notch, as I, I would expect Wonderful. nothing like it would actually be more momentous if there was some bad acting, honestly. Yeah. I think with the LGP and in Malayalam cinema yeah. as a whole. Agreed. Um, I thought that the visuals were, were really, really good, uh, second to Jolly Taku. They are. They're, they lend themselves that way by intention. It's design. Th yeah. This doesn't have the scope of visual stuff just inherent in the story, mm -hmm. but the visuals are still great. I mean, they're still really, really good, um, especially some of the warped moments. Those were really good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and as was just, again, I don't know how much of the night lighting was serendipitously just made that way. Yeah. Well, with the fireflies and then obviously the lights. And, and the and, fog. Yeah, and the fog. And the moonlight. 
Um, he's I, really good at filming at night. Really, really good at filming at night and yeah. filming in, in jungle spaces. Yeah. Really good at that. Uh, his cinematographer in this one was... Um, uh, m- m- Say his Madhu, uh, we've we, we know that name. Uh, Madhu Nitakandan, and forgive me if I've mispronounced uh, your name. But so yeah, I thought all the cinematography was absolutely really really good. Um, I especially loved when uh, he was getting the massage. That, yeah, that, that whole sequence. the whole vibe that what the the production team built the um, the the sequence that the cinematographer and and LGP put together in terms of and that actress was fantastic and it's like that whole in terms of visually so, that that part was the most stunning for me in the film. I feel yeah, like. and it was both weird and sexy at the same yeah. time, right? Yeah, it was like. Well, it's because. Well, I'm not gonna. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, we'll get into all the, the 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 juicy stuff that you actually. Yeah. That I feel like films like this, sci-fi films, and this might be the best sci-fi film we've seen from India because we haven't seen, we a, haven't lot. seen a lot. It is. That's one of the best sci-fi films I've ever seen. Yeah, well, it's it's very quintessential. Well, it's very quintessential Indian. It's yes. very Indian. Very. But and it, sure, I'm sure there's a few things we missed. Oh, completely. Yeah. Um, but it's also very old school sci-fi in terms of. It's all about the story. It's uh, it's all very strange. It's not like Star Wars sci-fi. No, it's a lot more... of people think like sci-fi is Star Wars, and Star Wars is sci-fi, but it's more sci-fi fantasy, right? Big budget sci-fi. But that's not really what sci-fi is. Sci-fi no. is old school, like Soylent Green. Yep. Like there's something happening, and there's not these big battle scenes or it's... Ray Bradbury short stories. If you ever read any Ray Bradbury short stories, or similar Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah, Invasion of the Body Snatchers is a good example. Um, Just and and even. Uh, this isn't there, but it's very much the same usage of sci-fi and stuff that's changing reality. This is obviously what Rod Serling liked to do with Twilight Zone episodes. Yeah, very Twilight very Zone. Very Twilight Zone. This could have been a, a Twilight Zone episode, yeah. honestly. And, and it, the, if you haven't seen Twilight Zone, the, the, the original. Yeah, the original I Rod Serling the series. New one, and I don't even know how, if that even is still on with Jordan Peele. I don't know. But the, uh, the originals, if you haven't seen those, go check those out. Those are some of the best things ever. ever to come out on ever. television um and then oh another thing i want to talk about before we get into everything else is the score was oh so complimentary yeah uh, and it was it was very sci-fi you, you use that a lot but creepy yet simple but it got that, the message across that and that wanted. one <laughs> yes where it's like you know it's score but is it is it a sound effect is that really like we're getting some composition to make us feel a certain way, mm-hmm. or is that coming from a UFO? What is that? <laughs> that it was an, it's an otherworldly sound, and it worked perfectly. Yeah, yeah I love in the the compo- We already said his name, yeah. I think, at the beginning, but he did a a, a really really good job. Um, at, as at, was at, sound design at creating great. the ambiance. Yes, that you needed to, especially as it went on and got a little weirder and a little weirder and a little weirder. Um, it it really helped you get into it. Um, uh, this film. I felt it was really balanced too. I never felt like it got off the rails. No. At uh, all. And it could have eased. This thing could have been like, you could have been sitting back going, what the heck? And I think a lot of people did because I saw when it first came out, I saw people praising it, but I also saw people like, what? <laughs> So it just one. It depends on how much you like to think about films. If this is your style yeah. of film, yeah. Like if you're some a cinephile, people, especially yeah, I've, I've noticed in Indian cinema, like a, a lot of people love being spoon fed. Love Sadly. being spoon fed. And this is the opposite of a spoon fed film. You're gonna this literally LGP is like you're gonna think here, and and you're gonna tell me what you think. This, I'm not gonna tell you what you think. Yeah. So look, like we talk about films that we would love the general populace in America to see, so that they break the stereotype in their mind about Indian cinema, and we go to the films that are the more commercially accessible for them that they would really enjoy. Mm-hmm. And in the list, we we've gone down that list before. This is a film that may now be at the top of my list, but all of his films are this way, and there's a few others that are this way, like the one we saw. I always forget that it's the farmer one that's in the conversation. The last farmer, yeah, the yeah. La- yeah. So. If there's like, as I was watching this, I thought this is an inside thing. I'll explain. I thought <laughs> Valerie would love this movie. Oh yeah, she definitely would. And the reason Valerie would is because Valerie has an extraordinarily high IQ, both cinematically and just intelligently, and she's a filmmaker. This is the kind of film that if I was talking to people, she directed my header episode. My yes, header. Um, uh, yes, and stuff. Some stuff on my reel. Yeah. Valerie directed, and she played Hamlet in the Hamlet I directed yeah. back when we were all yeah, at Harvest. She did. But. 
this is the film that if I'm on set and I'm talking to people that are there and we're, we're talking about movies that we love, that would be like The Lighthouse and uh, The Shape of Water, things of that nature. And I and when we talked about it, I'd say there's there's a filmmaker you need to see. Like if you like if you like Alejandro and Yuritu, mm -hmm. and like take in Yuritu and Nolan and put them together and then add something you've never seen before. That's what you're going to get. The, with the this issues man. I think some people would run into is one, obviously, you, they need to be into this kind of film, right? But um, just I even found it with when I showed my friends Con Balanji Nights, stuff that it's not foreign to me anymore. Was right, foreign to them, and how right how Indians tell stories. Right, right. It was like they're like it's such a different way. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess uh, it yeah, is. It used to be that. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> right. That's why I, after we saw Law, I, I said to Indrani, I said, I'd really like to know what an American who doesn't love Amir Khan and doesn't know what so many things are in Indian culture now that we do, because I take that for granted. I still can. I probably will always consider myself just out of the respect of it as like I'll never know enough about India no you for know what sure. I mean but, but we, we, know, we know way more than the average bear here I'd say we know we probably the two of the primary experts <laughs> in terms of you just talking about white Americans yeah exactly. uh, on Indian cinema right but in comparison to like Indians who grew up with obviously we know nothing right yeah. Um, but yeah so it's all it's all perspective so that's what I think sometimes people would run into the, with this like yeah. what and then obviously there's other stuff that they're, they're confused at cultural things they're confused at obviously just of course. The film in general of course. so that's what I would be hesitant to but I, I do agree I think there's certain people that would just absolutely adore this film I yeah. just hope that cult, some of the cultural stuff wouldn't but anyways let's just get into the nitty gritty here uh, what do you think? Just what's your overall theory about what what the entire thing is? I think the whole thing. I know your thing, messaging is. Yeah. I'm talking about the messaging and the whole thing. I really do think this is just allegorical, metaphorical sim symbolism leaving you with a message. I don't think that this has in the same way um I'm trying to think of an example. Um I, the only examples I can go to would be some of the, the, the poetics that came out of the Greek theater and even some of the Roman theater that mm. were the tales of the gods kinds of things where what you're seeing is representative. It's not literal. I, I don't think this is a grounded earthly story about two guys as undercover cops in a village. I don't think it was ever intended to be that. And I think that's one of the mistakes you can have if you come away from it is thinking that this is supposed to be a, a, a film that's rooted and grounded in reality where I think that it is like like Jolly Katu. It is primary more than Jolly Katu because Jolly Katu has some groundedness. I think this is just a film that is all symbology, all metaphor, mm. all messaging. Mm. I, so I... I immediately, very early on, recognized the symbolism and thought, this, 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 this has nothing to do with literal people. Well, I disagree. Okay. Yeah, I disagree. I think it, although I think the messaging is a, th a thousand percent there, I think there's also the actual reality that he was trying to create, which does have to do with aliens, which is fun. Um, but this whole thing is, is obviously a loop, right? Right. The, their world right now. And I'm not saying this is he's trying to say this is the world we are in right now. This is a world that he created um, that kind of looks like ours. But it, th this whole thing is is a loop, which was obviously evident, which which I think that actually means loop. The, the title. Oh, truly. Yeah, I think that oh, okay. actually does mean loop. But I think it's like almost a portal. So when, yeah, portal is definitely part so of. So when they when they cross the bridge, the yes, that's obviously when they step into the the portal, the realm, wherever they're in, right? Uh, so I also saw some theories that because I looked up a bunch of different theories, um, but some people also thought that there was a, a reference for social media. <laughs> Actually, like they stepped over and how every, immediately I everybody just started being just the Asshole. worst possible versions of themselves. I could see yeah, that. Yeah. So I, I, I like that uh, little and message. And how free you feel when you leave it. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> but the 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 whole loop of it is this is just something that can, is going to go on and has been going on the entire time. So yes. like, the w best way somebody explained it was if there was a prequel, mm -hmm. it would have been Subin and not th the bigger guy. 
the main cop, the head cop. No, not the head cop. Oh, uh, j- j- uh, oh you, the, the, the other guy's name. Oh, sorry, I, I'm sure I have it right here. At right. the very end, that leads them to him. Mm-hmm. No, not Joju. Them, VJ Fort. Sorry, him. So the the what they the way he explained it is obviously this is a loop that has just been happening and happening and happening. And it's going to keep right. happening again. Right. And so they say if there was a prequel film, it would have been him and uh, S- uh, Subin, Subin in his role and then that's why at the end you see them in the car flip and subin came to the front, front. and so in the let's say there's a next film um it'll be a new cop and he will be will his be role. his role and and then uh he will be joy right and so the um and that's why like when the massage lady she thought she knew him Right, because she had seen him before, and right. she said he touched a kid, and right. he did, and he did, he did touch, he did touch the kid, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so yes. this is just one big loop that keeps happening over and over and over again because of these aliens. I do believe these. I don't know, and that's one of the things that I like is that he didn't explain why, but obviously there's aliens, right? Yeah, <laughs> and they they made that evident. They made a comment at the beginning about Americans being abducted, and they were just laughing at it. And right. Who knows why they were laughing at it, but they were laughing at it. Um, but I think at night when they walk around, I think that maybe there's true selves, maybe. Mm. Is they're, they're walking around and they're actual aliens, because they keep, they reference that a lot. Yeah, a lot. People walking around at night and stuff like that. Um, and I think there's certain people that help um, this character, whoever that character is at the time, become joy. Like the lady that just mm-hmm. runs at him with an axe. Yes. <laughs> The I love that. Slaps him in his face, uh, it, um, and all this other stuff. And so, like, the, the, it's this whole simulation, and um, just f- for him to keep becoming joy, that character, um, each time the loop starts. And so, it's each time a cop comes, and but after what I we don't know, and it's not explained what happens to Joy, the Subin's character, now, right when the loop starts again, does he become a, just a member of the village? Does uh, I I think because it's a it's a loop and it's a cycle, I think those who stay in the loop and stay in the cycle, they never fully realize joy and joy is paralyzed in their existence and they don't experience joy in the fullest of its extent. Oh no! You only you only fully realize joy until you break out of the cycle. So do you think once the loop starts again, joy gets out of the cycle? I think joy is always there. Well, I know, but they keep becoming he like he'll become joy next, right? Um, but so, what happens to Subin's character now, though? Because he's no longer Joy if if the if it has restarted, and he is Joy. Right. So, what happens to Subin's character? Right. Where does he go? Right. I don't know. It, <laughs> I have no clue. It and this is one of those movies that I like that though. I do too. And this is one of those movies that you could have so many different theories. Theories, yeah. There's a ton of theories you can. And have. every theory has a plausibility to it that makes you go, wow, that may be why they did that. And then... I love that. If somebody didn't get the film or doesn't like the film, this isn't one of those films like the year that you and I were arguing over La La Land and Moonlight and Mm -hmm. like, which is the better film? We both really believed, how could you be so dumb as to not see that this is the superior film? Yeah. I I would have no problem. I would be kind of sad. But if somebody saw this and said, I don't like it, I don't get it, I think it's too high level, I think it's trying to be bigger than it really is, I'd be like... I disagree with you, but <laughs> I can't. I can't deny that your your point right there is actually you have validity to it. I can't argue with that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's nothing wrong with nothing it. nothing wrong with that. If I you just don't get this film. I pref- I love films like this that that so you smart. can talk about for hours of just what do what do you think happened? Why do you think he said this? Why do you think he's the they did this? Blah yeah. blah 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 blah. What are, like what are the people with the lights on their head? Why were they flying at the end? Like what? What are all these different things? Why didn't he flinch when he shot the gun and at him? Are they because he's an alien? That's why. And and are they are they really aliens? Are they interdimensional beings, not yeah. just extraterrestrials? No. And it's absolutely. I mean, I think the portal is one of the most obvious things. Of oh yeah. It because when he looks through it, you see the machinations of time, and so everything's transcending space and time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For and sure. definitely things changed. I really love. So someone pointed out, I'm really loving the the idea that, oh, you want to know what this is about? This is about social media. <laughs> I, I, that in and of itself, you could watch this and just think about, that's the other thing. Mm-hmm. Take 10 theories, watch the film 10 times, and you'll have 10 different ways to enjoy this movie. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> a thousand percent. And that's it, that's one of the things that's so brilliant about it. And yep. I, I feel like films, Jordan Peele does it, um, obviously. Nolan does it. Nolan does it a lot. Um, and sometimes, obviously, like it, uh, some people love Tenet. Rick did not like Tenet yeah, at I didn't all. Like Tenet. Uh, I, I think it's. I haven't seen it yet, so obviously I can't comment on it. But nope, Rick didn't like Nope. I have a bunch of friends who loved Nope as well. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not saying they're similar in, in that way because obviously I haven't seen it. Um, but he's one of the other directors that does stuff like that. That was like I'm going to tell a story. It might be weird to you. Exactly. You might not understand it. Yeah. But this is the story that we're telling here. Yeah, uh, Darren Aronofsky does that too with his films. Yeah, he does. Um, and he, if you don't know Darren Aronofsky stuff, he's that kind of director. He's like, I have a story I want to tell and I'm going to tell it. And if you get it, great. If you don't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm not thinking about an audience yeah. at all. I'm just telling a story. Which is so fitting for LGP and in, in, in being in Malayalam cinema. And, yeah. and <laughs> like it, it fits him so well. It really Mali does. And, and I, I just... There are some great filmmakers on the global stage. Not that the global stage in and of itself gives you the higher level sense of achievement. That's not what I'm talking about. The reason I want him on a global stage is because then more people experience it. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody to experience elevative artistry because mm -hmm. it, it, it is transforming. It makes you ponder the universal truths and makes you appreciate the miracle of life. And it's just... <laughs> Why wouldn't you want everybody in the world yeah. to be exposed to this level of intelligence in, yeah. in movie making? Oh, and also, I, I, um, at the beginning, obviously, when that story was being told about the the monk, yeah. with great animation, with, yeah, it was. love that animation. Uh, it was very similar, like when Harry Potter told the the, yeah, the that's, story. That's exactly, it reminded me of the Deathly Hallows story. Um, but that almost obviously became true. Where yes, obviously the the main cop in this became the monk. Yep. As they're walking around. And then somebody said his partner became the basket that uh -huh. he was in. Uh -huh. And then Subin was obviously the... The, the armadillo. Was it an armadillo? Yeah. And then um, they switch. Yeah. Uh, and he keeps... Obviously, that came very evident there at the end of the film. Yeah. Uh, until they did their grease moment. But I, re I really love the one through line for me that was both profoundly veiled mm -hmm. and stupidly obvious mm -hmm. which was this incessant search for, for joy. joy yeah yeah sometimes the most uh poignant ones are the most obvious ones that yeah, exactly if you're, if you're looking for deeper stuff you might miss it but right? that's really hard to do it's really hard to make something overtly obvious and still keep it cloaked yeah at the same time and it's a testament to writing, the, directing, the yeah. writing of this thing and translating this. I would have loved to have known. It's probably much better in Malayalam, too. Oh, the conversations that they had and translating this from the page onto the screen. Like, I remember being at a Q&A for The Shape of Water, and it's such a weird film because it's Guillermo. And I remember one of the questions asked, I was going to ask it, but somebody else did. And asked because the whole cast was there. Guillermo was not there. Well, I got a chance to talk to, I forgot her name, who plays the main yeah. actress in it mm -hmm. afterwards. And she said she would tell Guillermo this comment I had because she loved the comment because I loved the film so much. But somebody said, did this, when you saw the final project on screen, done, mm -hmm. how closely did it replicate what you envisioned in the mm -hmm. script? Because it's such a weird movie. Yeah. And they all said, you might be surprised to know it's exactly what we saw <laughs> on the page. So I'd love to know if that's what, LGP. If, yeah, the, if, LG, if he feels like what I read, I was able to create and we got, and the writer, it's like, this is what I envisioned and we got yeah, it. I bet. Yeah. I bet so. Also, there's just other random, like, like that guy that when he walks in, everybody stays silent. I know. Didn't explain it Didn't at all. Didn't explain it. There's multiple characters like that. And I, I was like... <laughs> Are they in charge? Is that the head alien? What is going right. on? I also loved it when he got shot in the ear and yeah. he's just laughing about it. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh, you shot my ear. <laughs> that one, that one I'm almost positive because he's an alien. Yeah. And then that's, I think, or he's in such a trance they can't feel pain. Maybe, maybe that guy that came in that they all got quiet about mm -hmm. was an actual like villager dude that lives in the jungle. And when he's there, they all have to be more human. Maybe. And so they're all like, or he, this is guy's not one of us. Why did she chase him with an axe? All but right. you could go to something he did in the previous loop. Yeah. That's why she chased him. But because, here, because she was angry at something he did. Well, and here's the question. Are our two protagonists, were they aliens the whole time? 
or did they reach enlightenment and become aliens when they crossed the bridge? No, uh, I think they were. I think they were at one point real, um, and I think they became alien. Yeah, I think. After- I think they reached a level of literal enlightenment. I think that's what's symbolic of the yeah. helmets and the lights on the head. I think. Yeah, there's obviously that symbolism. I think each time the loop starts is when. But I think each time uh, somebody, a cop specifically, enters, he's a real cop, and then. He becomes either enlightened, an alien, whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. each loop until he gets more and more and more. Yeah, but see, that's the thing where... And I think then after that, I think Subin's... I think he'll just become part of the village and continue the loop that way. Yeah. When, obviously, our second cop becomes Joy on the next loop. Yeah. And then the main cop becomes Joy in the loop after that. Right. And then because they're going to keep having cops come because that's why the massage lady said she's like, you're a cop because anytime a person's in this role... I know they're a cop. Right. And she can also tell them what his future is going to be because she knows what's going to happen to him. It also conveys two seemingly contradictory theological viewpoints as well. And it conveys them both in a positive light. So it conveys, among other things, this lifelong journey. And if you look at the loop, you can think about the reincarnation cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then the consistency with which they're using symbology and actually direct scriptures from the book of Revelation, that's Christianity. He does that a lot, LGP. He he does that a lot. Yeah. And that both can reach an end of enlightenment that even though they have completely polar opposite beliefs about existence, because one belief system believes you can cycle, Mm -hmm. That you can reincarnate and that you can have another cycle and that you're learning with each new cycle and hopefully you're becoming more enlightened with each new cycle. Mm -hmm. Whereas Christianity believes in one lifespan Mm -hmm. ending in, but they both result in a place of having reached enlightenment if you keep going on the journey with intentionality. And that's where, see, you said earlier, so you think the story is, is... as weird as it gets, it does have a rooted groundedness of these being literal cops because yeah. I think they are simply symbolic. No, I think that I think that I think there is symbolism there for sure. Yeah, for sure. But no, I I think the world he built is a literal world. Okay, I, I, I don't. Do believe, yeah. yeah. Well, you're an idiot. So well. <laughs> <laughs> let us know uh, who you agree with, and if yeah. you agree with Rick, you're an idiot. Yeah, and, why uh, do you, what, and, and especially uh, how much I disliked uh, the piano playing in this. Was there piano playing in this? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let us know what you thought about the film. What should be the next Malayalam and LJP. LJP. Obviously, uh, we want to get to all of his stuff eventually. I think he did one. Uh, it was one of his early ones with Fafa. Um, <laughs> I think it was was it Amen? Is Turn that, that on it, right now. Is that what it's called? Anyways, but I know when does his new one come out? I feel like uh, it should be soon, right? Really Cause, soon, because we've seen multiple teasers now. Why do I feel like it was September? Hold on, looking it up here real quick, and then we'll end this credits. This one, right? Mamudi, because he's the door. Mm-hmm. No, wait, it's this one. No, it's that one. December, no. Oh, it was updated from December of last year. Okay. Okay, well, whatever. And he wrote it, directed it, produced by Mamudi. Yeah. Interesting. No, so if anyway. you know when it's uh, coming out. No, he's also- in this one too. No, you produced it. I'm yeah, saying. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously, let us know if you know when it's coming out, um, because I would love to catch one of his films in theaters. In theaters, especially with how much he loves visuals. I don't know if this is going to be one of the ones that. It's, well, although the teaser was weird because it was like that half of the, yeah, half, half was red and half was, uh, and he had, was just performing the scene, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it was. He be, was lip syncing a, a a famous old scene. Yeah, I would love to see one of. And his, then the teaser was just people sleeping. I would love to see one of his films in theaters. Absolutely. I think that would be a good experience. Yep. Anyways, let us know what you thought about the film down below. Sorry for the long review.